What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be going over the Swift UI 2.0 app lifecycle. I'm going to be going over the things that you can handle inside of the app object. I'm going to show you how to access the app delegate and I'm also going to show you how to create a custom scene delegate. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. I'm going to start off with a brand new project just so that we can see everything happening from scratch and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that interface is set to Swift UI and Swift UI app is set for the life cycle. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so starting off, we can see that we're inside of the app.swift file, whatever your app name is, .swift file. And then we have a very important attribute here called main. This is essentially saying, hey, this is where um, the main method is ran, essentially like where the app is gonna kick off. So this is the very beginning point of our app lifecycle. And this is essentially replacing the app delegate, which used to be the earliest point that you can start writing code for your app. Um, now the, the new app object is the earliest point where you can start writing code for your app. So one of the first things that you'll probably notice when you're switching over to a Swift UI 2.0 lifecycle is that you don't have did finish launching with options because you no longer have an app delegate. And a lot of the third party frameworks that you would generally work with are going to tell you to configure their their library inside of the did finish launching with options right so instead of doing it in did finish launching with options what we're going to do is we're going to actually do something like that in the initializer all right and as you can see it's just a simple initializer and then i just added a comment here this is where you would normally do that configuration instead of did finish launching with options you just do it right here um, and you would just add any code directly into the initializer now i highly recommend making a separate you know, function call for this type of thing, and you call it inside of the initializer, you know, like this. So you would do something like that, you would configure it like that, but I mean, it's up to you however you wanna write your code. Now, another thing that you would normally do with an app delegate is you know, respond to whether your app is going to be in the foreground. If it did go to the background, you might wanna do like some saving of state or something like that. So let me show you how you can do that. All right, so as you can see here, there's this environment property that we call scene phase. Now, a scene phase is a way of tracking the state of the current scene. So if we wanted to observe whenever the scene or essentially what's going on in the primary window of the app, what's what, whether it's like in the foreground, if it's active, or if it's going to the background, or if it's inactive, then what we can do is we can um, observe this property, this scene phase property on our window group, which is essentially the scene. So what we can do is we add in a modifier. All right, so as you can see on my scene, my window group, I'm adding this modifier called on change and I'm um, observing the changes of the scene phase. So whenever there's a change to the scene phase, we're going to be passed in the phase and its current state. So then what I can do is I could have a switch statement, which allows me to determine whether it's active, inactive background, or if Apple decided to add some, some new scene phase in there, then you can, you know, add it in right here or have some type of default functionality or just break or whatever, right? So the entire thing right here is that if you don't need any special properties that are provided by the app delegate or the scene delegate, then you could probably handle most of your use cases right here. A lot of the time, all you really need to do is just handle whether it's active or going into the background, and then you could put that code right here. You don't need an app delegate no more. You don't need a scene delegate anymore. So if that's all you need, then you're pretty much good. But if you do need a, a method from the you know app delegate or the scene delegate, this is how we're going to add it in. So let's go back up to the top and let's go ahead and add in the um, app delegate adapter. All right. So as you can see right here, we have this UI app delegate adapter, um, like property wrapper or attribute. I don't know what I don't know exactly what it is, but you have this app adapter right here. And what it's doing is it's asking you for the app delegate that you wanna specify the app to use. So right now we don't have an app delegate. So let's go ahead and create a custom class that is an app delegate so that we can actually use that for our app delegate specified here. 
All right, so as you can see here, I created my app delegate and it looks just like an app delegate that you would normally get or start off with when you start a UI kit project. I just don't have all like that boiler pretty garbage code that is usually, you know, <laughs> deleted anyways. But anyways, uh, we have the did finish launching with options. So like, let's say that you did need to access the launch options for whatever reason. Um, then you can do it here. Now, in order to tie these two things together, what you have to do is you actually need to take your class, your my I called mine my app delegate, right? We need to go back over to our app, and then we need to pass in the type right here, which is my app delegate. All right, so as you can see right here, I'm passing in my app delegate dot self to the app delegate adapter, and now we, what we could do is we could like utilize our app delegate instance anywhere in our code inside of our app object, right? And we can also pass it into our views and stuff like that if we want it. But if I want it, I could just do app delegate, you know, dot, you know, accessibility, accessibility activator, some like whatever you would normally do with your app delegate. I know that some people like to keep their core data stuff inside of their app delegate just because that's where it starts off. Like maybe you keep your context or your persistence container or whatever in there. You can access it there. I don't recommend it, but like you can do all the normal things that you're used to with your app delegate. Now let's just double check and make sure that our app delegate is actually firing because we do want to see that it's firing by like just having a print statement in here saying hi from app delegate. And then when we run this, we should be able to see that we are getting the app delegate to say hi from app delegate, as you can see right here. And then we're also printing out the state which we can see back over here. I'm just simply printing out whatever phase we are in. So just to show you that how that works, if we press the home button, we can see that our scene is inactive and then it goes to the background phase. When we open up our app again, it goes from inactive to active and you can see all that stuff being printed out right here. So, so far everything is working as expected. Now, let's say we wanted to work with like a scene delegate or we wanted to do something like that, right? What we would have to do is we'd have to add in this um, scene delegate or the scene connection method in our app delegate. So let's add that now. All right, so as you can see in our app delegate, we have this new method called um, configuration for connecting scene session, right? And what we're going to do is we need to actually return a UI scene configuration. So what we'll do is we'll create a UI scene configuration, right? And we'll do that with the name. The name doesn't really matter. The session role, what we wanna do is we wanna pass in the connecting scene session dot role. And then we'll just simply return that config. Now, what we actually want to do is use our own custom scene delegate, right? So what we have to do now is create another object that's going to be our scene delegate. I'll call it my scene delegate and we need to pass it in here, but it's going to be a little bit different, but let's go ahead and create our scene delegate. All right. So as you can see here, we have our very own custom, my scene delegate, which is going to be one of our scene delegates. And I just threw in one of these methods right here. As you can see, I threw in the will connect to session um, method and we're just going to you know, simply say connecting scene just so that we can get something printed out. What we're gonna do now, since we do have a scene delegate, we need to go back to our app delegate and on the UI scene configuration, we need to specify what class we're gonna be using for our scene delegate. It will then create our class, the, the specified class um, by itself, and it will hold on to a reference of that scene delegate for us. All right, so as you can see, config has a, a delegate class property that we can set to my scene delegate dot self. Now, if we go ahead and run this, I believe that it will um, print out that connecting scene, as you can see here. So we have the app delegate set up, right? So hi from app delegate, then we're connecting our scene, which is happening over here in our scene delegate. And then we have the, the phase update right so our phase has been updated to active so just so that you cut you can kind of see what the order is of these uh, lifecycle events 
and you can kind of know where you're going to be inserting your code depend like if you need to insert it into specific lifecycle areas then you can kind of see like how things are being called so that's pretty much it that's all i really have to share it's pretty simple pretty straightforward it's just kind of hard to figure these things out and it took me a while to kind of figure out how to get access to the scene delegate and i finally found it out and i was so happy to, to be able to figure it out so as you can see most of the stuff that you need to do um, can be handled inside of the app itself. You don't need an app delegate. You don't need a scene delegate. You can, um, you know, configure your libraries inside of the initializer right here like this. If you need to observe different states of your app, like whether it's active or going into the background, you can do it with a scene phase and then you just simply um, detect on change and you can go into the different scene phases. You have active, inactive, background, and then Apple may add more in the future, who knows? So you can add different functionality based off of that. Now, if you if you have some legacy stuff or there are methods that you need to access inside of the app delegate, like um, notifications or something like that, which I actually don't think that you do notifications inside of the app delegate anymore, but like if you had some type of functionality that needed specifically to be inside of the app delegate, you can do it here. And uh, the same thing for the scene delegate. If you need to access specific functionality that's only accessible in the scene delegate, then you can do it here. For example, one of the things that I was trying to do was I was trying to figure out how to do shortcuts. So the shortcut, um, or not shortcuts, but quick actions. In order to handle quick actions, you actually need to do it from the scene delegate. And this is where you would actually handle all the functionality is inside of the scene delegate because the app delegate no longer calls that functionality. So it's no longer uh, useful to have that code in there. So you could go back over to the app delegate. You can still have things like um, the shortcut item, but it doesn't get called. So there are things that are supposed to only get called inside of the scene delegate. There are things that are only supposed to get called inside of the app delegate. And now you have access to just, uh, just about everything that you need it from before. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope that you liked the video. I hope that it was informative. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure you subscribe. Now go out there and keep coding passionate.